Welcome, I'm Roger Noriega, and we're going to be playing a little bit of Master of Orion 2, the 1996 video game. Alpha Niner, this is Science Station Hermes. Bye, bye, bye. Roger, Hermes. All clear. Sector Gamma Delta 4. Request clearance for landing. That's Roger, Alpha Niner. You are cleared for landing. Switch to station control. Switching to station control, sink and lock. Sir, reading an Interim Battle Cruiser in Sector 7. Alert status. Clear weapon interlocks. Alert Zulu Command to our situation. Once again, I'm Roger Noriega, and thanks for joining me. That's the intro to Master of Orion 2, The Battle at Antares. This is a 1996 4 times turn-based strategy game set in space. It was designed by Steve Barsha and Ken Bird, and developed by Simtex, as you saw in the lead-in titles, uh, who developed its predecessor, Master of Orion. The PC version was published by Microprose in 1996, and the Apple Macintosh version a year later by Maxsoft in partnership with Microprose. Despite its age, this game is still a big deal and there is a huge fan base. As you see some of the people involved in this game, this was, an in my humble opinion, a wonderful heir to the 1993 Master of Orion. Now that's another game that we're going to get to at another day, but right now we're going to get into it. I've enjoyed this game. This is the one that I recall playing the most and I've up until even uh, six months ago, I still play this game. And now that it's available on Steam, Master of Orion 1 and 2, or as they say, Moo 1 and Moo 2, they're available for $5.99. That's $5.99. So, we're going to get to it. It's, it's a real fun game. And uh, before I get to that... Master of Orion 2 won the Origins Award for Best Fantasy or Science Fiction Computer Game of 1996 and was well received. But the reviewers did have different, you know, aspects of what they liked and what they disliked. I loved it. This was micromanagement at its best. And then again, it wasn't. There were just issues that were in the original game and they added to it. It is a more complex game and the differences between the two are wow it's you know it is the heir to master of orion but i'm gonna stop talking i'm gonna just, i apologize i mean i'm gonna get to the gameplay uh in just a moment the plot is long before the time in which the game is set two extremely powerful races the orions and the Antarans, fought a war that devastated most of the galaxy the victorious Orions, rather than exterminate the Antarans, imprisoned them in a pocket dimension before departing the galaxy, leaving behind a very powerful robotic warship, the Guardian, to protect their homeworld. Sometime after the game starts, the Antarans, having broken out of their prison dimension, begin to send increasingly powerful fleets against the players' colonies, who destroy them rather than to invade. The only way they can be stopped is to carry the battle to their home universe through a dimensional porter portal. It's not the only way to win the game, but it's definitely one of the ways. This is your startup screen when you start the game, and first thing you do is you want to hit over 
and click on name game and you have different levels here you have a tutor level which explains everything every screen every step it tells you what to do then you have an easy level which is very easy average you have hard and my favorite which is impossible that means the AI is very sophisticated and very tough to beat then you have galaxy sizes and they have something new here in this version which I'm not familiar with it's called cluster I don't know what it means but you have huge with heads which has more star systems and more planets the original game had just star systems one planet per system this one has multiple stars and multiple planets if you click on small medium large and then again my favorite which is huge now then you can choose a galaxy age organic rich meaning you can get a lot of food throughout the galaxy lots of planets mineral rich that means a lot of good stuff that you can build and then you have average so that's kinda like middle of the way this is how many players you can play against actually it's seven plus yourself you can you against one other guy that's probably the way you want to start but I don't I go all the way up and then this is how you start up pre-warp average and post-warp tactical combat is where you actually play battle as opposed to letting the computer determine random events lots of things can happen in the game and then the Antarans attack of course you want them in so that's the way I'm gonna start at impossible I'm gonna accept and then you have the different races that you can choose the Alkari they have a ship defense of plus 50 their home world is laced with artifacts and the type of government is dictatorship we'll get to choosing that in a moment the uh, dictatorship the Bulrathi their ship offense is plus 20 these guys are mean dudes in invasions and they're from high gravity worlds and their former government is dictatorship. That doesn't mean that all of them are. There are variations to this game. The Darlocks. As my buddy Peter said, can you imagine having a Darlock? It could take any form you want. In this game, espionage is plus 20, stealth ships, and dictatorship for government. The Illarians. Their ship defense is plus 25, their ship offense is plus 20, they're telepathic, they're omniscient, and a feudal type government. Omniscient means they can see the entire galaxy. The Nolems. These guys are the Ferengi. Tax is plus one. They get more money by taxing. They live in low gravity. They're expert traders. They're lucky. Also dictatorship type government. Humans. They have charisma and democracy. The Clackons. These are eh the worker bees you might say something like the Borg but not exactly we may have the Borg later their food production is good plus one their industrial production is plus one and you'll see what that stuff will do for your different races you can choose to be whichever race you want to be and this is their good and their bad they have a large home world so they can get a lot of ants but they're uncreative and their government is unification the Mechlars the Borg industrial production is plus two that means they factories 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 their production is out of this world they're cybernetic and they're also a dictatorship form of government the Mershon the kiddies ship offense plus 50 these kids can go to war they have a rich home world they're warlords meaning they're pretty vicious in combat and their government is dictatorship here come these know-it-alls the Cylons their scientific research is plus two meaning whatever they get for each item whether it's a person doing work or technology they're gonna get plus two to whatever if for instance you have a research base it's gonna give you five points per person well with the scientific research it's plus two automatically so each person with a scientific base for everyone else generates five they generate seven points that's what that stuff means. They live in low gravity worlds, so they're not good on heavy gravity worlds. They have a large home world. They're creative and dictatorships. The Sacra, the lizards. Population growth is 100. These guys just 
man, they're really good when it comes to test tube babies. They just grow, grow, grow. Their food production is good. Their espionage, well, they're lizards. Minus 10. They live in subterranean worlds, meaning they can increase the size of a planet. Large home world, and they're feudal. The silicoids. These are the crystal lion creatures. Or lithovores. Their population growth, man, they just don't grow. It takes them forever. They're minus 50 in population growth. Uh, they're repulsive. They're tolerant. And their government is dictatorship. And then they have the Trillerans. They're aquatic creatures, transdimensional, and also government dictatorship. Transdimensional means there are times when there's like a space flux in the galaxy. No one can move, but these guys can. So every race has their attributes. You play to them depending on what you like. You know, I, I'm a human, charismatic and democracy, but I try to build my own race. So I go to custom. And I am going to choose humans. I'm going to clear everything. I like low G worlds. You see, I get up to 10 racial picks. But this minus 5 takes my picks up to 15. I love subterranean. I love creative. That that's that's like you have to have it. I'm not I don't care for spying, but I do take signs at plus 1 and you know, I don't look. My, my goal is to keep them off my planet, so I don't really care for ground combat. And I'm going to increase my production plus three. So those are the plans. That's what I like to do. This is the way I play the game. I choose my own, and you can right away do the same. So I'm going to go with human. Usually I go with Roger Daniel, but I'm playing the game right now. Czar Royer. Should be Star Roger, but Royer sounds better. My colors, red's nice. Oh, and the different colors have a different scheme of ships. And you Star Trek fans, you're gonna be happy. There's uh, what color? I think they're red and yellow. Those are almost like imperial colors, if I remember correctly. Or with that, this yellow right here. This orange, I forget what it is, but each one has its own attribute. But that's the human symbol. Um, and I'm going to go with purple. I like purple. And there it is. The game has started. Our home planet, we're going to accept it. It's Sol. And this is the game. It starts at 3,500, we'll say AD. Yes, I said AD. I'm too old for anything else. When you click on this box, there's your tax rate. Your empire right now has got 50 billion credits. And if you continue to do what you're gonna do, you're gonna get nine billion credits per turn as of right now. Well, I'm gonna take my tax rate up to 20. And it's not gonna do very much because I only have one planet right now. Well, actually one star system. This tells me I have five starting command points from one star base. I already have Tachyon Communication, so it gives me another point. And I have a total of seven command points. But I have two frigates, a non-combat ship, so three points are used. Meaning I now have four. So when I start getting into the minus, I have to pay for it. So right now, ship maintenance costs are zero because I'm ahead of the game. This is my food level. Everything's good. These are, yes, I don't have any freighters. And this is the technology field. These are the different types of things you can use. Now, would your, everyone else but a Cylon and Creative, you, excuse me a moment, I have to cough. Sorry about that. I'm going to have cough drops because my throat is already drying. I've chosen Creative because I want to have access to everything. And the first thing I'm gonna go for is computers. Cause I wanna get Autolab, I wanna get some technology, and then I'm gonna move down to gravitic fields, advanced biology, sociology, I'm gonna come back around. My goal is to have Autolab and ion or plasma cannons. That's pretty good. And when you're when you get that far, you're really up on the game. So it's gonna cost me 400 research points to get there. I only have eight research points right now, so it's gonna take me 60 turns. 
So what I do now is I can click on my colonies tab, my planets, my fleet, see if I have any leaders. These are like heroes from other games. I can choose up to four colony leaders. They come over from time to time. And there are no ship leaders. Right now I have two frigates and a colony ship. <laughs> That's nothing. I have my planet Saul. That's a good planet. It's radiated, but it's good. Oh man, that's another good plan. Oh, this is going to be great. I have, wow, ultra rich and rich. I lucked out. Usually, I don't, I don't get that. But I'm only in one planet right now, so watch this. I can eventually colonize these two, but these I cannot because they're gas giants. They're uninhabitable. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this game. And you have to bear with me. I've been doing some tests. So, save this one. Bizarre Roger. And today's date. Which is 10, 15. Oh, it's not going to take numbers? There it is. 10, 15, 2017. Save it. And I have to cough again. Bummer. All right. So, again, there are no leaders. Am I contact with any races? No. When I have people here, I can ask for an audience. I can declare war. I can ignore them. I can do lots of things. I can get reports. But that's once the game really gets going. I can take a look at my fleets from here. I really don't have... I got very small ships. I should have had bigger ships. But whatever. My planets. I actually have two planets. I was mistaken. Let's go back here. Sol. Where's my other planet? Whoa. Says I have one here. Oh. Forgive me. These are the other two planets that I have access to. So I can use my colony ship to immediately create that planet. Or to colonize it. Or I can build a colony base in the star system to go there. But I'm going to go ahead and start up. First thing I want to do is I want to get more food. Choose hydroponics so it's plus two per person. It's going to take me 11 turns. And it's going to cost me... 60 billion credits. I don't have the money right now. From there, I'm going to go ahead and do an automated factory. And then I'll do the research lab. Biospheres will allow me to add two to the planet. Two million residents. Right now, I have a maximum of... 18, so I can, add, I can go up to 20. These are millions. In the meantime... I'm going to send my fleet out. I have two scouts. I'm going to send one that way. I'm going to send... Yeah, I'm going to send this one down here. And I'm going to have them go clockwise. So this guy going north is going to come around here. And this guy going south is going to come around here. And I'm going to keep my colony ship behind because I want to spread out. I already control this star system. So I'm going to be able to expand here relatively easily. But I'm not there yet. So I really don't have any other changes to make right now. I am pretty much ready to go ahead and just go to the next turn. And that's what you're probably going to be doing early on in the game. See, I'm now up to 56 billion credits. Nothing really changed. Nine turns, I got 56 bucks. I have a total of eight people. Nothing really changes. But these guys are moving and they're going to be in range. So let's go one more time. Oh, look at that. Scouts arrive at the wreck system. Nice. Ooh, two nice plants. And there's a stable wormhole. So you see that line going north from Rex? It's named Rex because I haven't colonized it. Once I colonize it, I can name it whatever I want. I'm going to have him take the conduit. And I'm going to wait one more turn to see what's over here. But I, I think I'm going to take that colony right now. I'm just going to send it over because those are two good planets. And I like minerals. So I'm going to send it. Scouts arrive at the Thoth system. 
Oh, look at that. Another good planet. And this guy arrives at the world. Ooh, that's an even better planet. But, oh, man, that's... Oh, jeez, there's a lot to go for. Okay, I'm going to bring this guy back. Because he can't go out anywhere else. See, he's too far away from an established colony. So I'm going to bring him back. And this guy is at Thoth. Oh, man, these are good planets. And i got to move if I want to colonize these. So, hydrophonic farms, seven more turns, build time is seven. So, it's still, still going to cost me money. If I wanted to buy it now, how much do I need? 52 billion credits more. So, I still need quite a bit more. And you can see your technology level. It'll give you a percentage. Watch. Remember it's at 400. I'm now down at 376. So you can see as it improves. And the more research points or scientists you have, the better. So I'm going to go again. I'm going to... Oh, man. Let me take a... Palladia. Oh my god, that's ultra rich. These are far away. I don't know if I can defend them if I have enemies show up. That's a small planet, but it's a good planet. Another ultra rich. Three planets in that star system. Palladia. Only one, but it's ultra rich. Thoth has rich. Rex has two planets, both rich. I think I'm going to take a chance and go out to Whirl. Yeah, and get those three planets. That is... Ugh. I'm going to take the Scout and the Colony Ship North. I'm taking a real big chance because I don't have any money to buy defenses. I'm really risking it big time. But I'm going to do it. I'm going to be aggressive on this one. So I'm going to have hit take this planet. Colony built on World 3. World. Uh, I'm going to keep it. So now, you can see it's telling you it's a barren planet. Low gravity. And you have a, uh, it's a Terran planet in the upper left hand corner then you have barren it's a medium sized planet with high gravity but it's very rich and I've taken the green one the Terran planet so I'm gonna colonize it I'm gonna start again by hydroponic farms marine barracks allows me to establish order automated factory and a missile base so that's that's basically what I'm gonna that's my strategy when I start up so I'm gonna have this guy start taking turns around the universe and see if anyone's around here. Let's see, how far can he go? I'm gonna have him go this way. So, look at the time slot, it's 35.5, so five turns have passed in this game. I'm gonna buy the hydroponic farms, that way I get more food, and I can move this guy over to here on the next turn to start getting him to work. I can have farmers, workers, or scientists. Right now, they're not building anything because it's a farmer. So I'm gonna move him. So I'm plus three. So this kid's gonna move over here now. Oh my goodness, I need freighters. I forgot about that. So before anything else, I have to buy some freighters. That's a bummer. So if he's going to come over here, that's going to send me back a little bit. I forgot about that. Freighters allow you to move the excess food, as you just saw. I have no freighters right here. When you just start out, there are some limits. So here we go. Look at this at the lawn system. It's ultra poor, but it's huge. Boots. Two nice planets. That one also has a wormhole. 
and so does this guy. So we're going to start right there. We're actually going to end right there. We just want to do this first time around, see how it is. We're going to save this game right here. Game, oh wait. I'm just going to call it 7 for turn 7. And uh, it looks like we're going to end right here at this point. We're doing a test. We're going to see how it works. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you. We're going to continue with this game. Go ahead and put your comments and let me know what you think. But this is Master of Orion 2. And we're just going to, we're just getting into the strategy of this game. This is how I play this game. It's an awesome, complex game. And I'm looking forward to what my, uh, one of my brothers, Da Vinci X, has to say about it. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and end this one. And uh, I think it's uh, real good. So, let me go ahead. I'm probably going to have to edit out the very end, but I want to thank everyone. And uh, the episodes will be coming out periodically. So we'll see you guys. This is Roger Noriega. I am playing Master of Orion 2, Battle of Antares. Battle at Antares.